Welcome to the Doubles Only Tennis Podcast, where you learn the best doubles strategies to improve your game and win more matches. I'm your host, Will Bocek. This podcast, my website, and my weekly newsletter all focus on the goal of better understanding the sport of doubles and helping players like you improve faster through actionable advice that you can use in your very next match. My goal is to provide the best double strategy resources in the world. And to do that, I study, analyze, and work with players at every level of the game, all the way up to the ATP and WTA tours. If you enjoy this podcast, I've created double strategy products that go even deeper if you want to take your doubles knowledge to the next level. At the end of this episode, I'll explain more about them, or if you want to learn more now, go to thetennistribe.com slash products. Here's today's episode. This is another conversation from Cancun at the WTA Finals, and in this one I chat with Coach Kirsten Flipkins. So if you're not familiar with Kirsten, she is a former WTA player who retired earlier in 2023 and is now transitioning to coaching, and she was there coaching Demi Shores and Desiree Krafchick. And this is a really good episode to uh, learn about coaches on tour as well as a former player. And she's got some really good tips for club players as well. So we talk a lot about strategy in this episode. This is certainly more uh, strategy heavy than a lot of the interviews from Cancun. So we discuss her transition from a player to a coach We talk about doubles tips for club players, how to improve drop shots and slices. Kirsten was one of the best uh, feel players on tour. She was really good at being crafty, hitting angles, hitting drop shots, um, using a lot of variety. So she talks a little bit about how she got so good at that. Uh, She shares with us her favorite doubles drill and then also talks a little bit about mixed doubles strategy. And then in the middle of this episode, Uh, We were in the hotel lobby um, for the Players Hotel, and Anz Jabor walked by and just grabbed the microphone from Kirsten. Uh, So you're going to hear from Anz Jabor very briefly as well. Um, It was kind of a a funny moment there. And then at the very end, we talk about Kirsten's plans for 2024 and beyond, and then how to make doubles more popular. So uh, whether you're a fan of the Pro Tour or you just want tips for your own doubles game, I think this is going to be a helpful Um, short, uh, about 15-minute conversation. Uh, So without further delay, enjoy uh, my chat with Kirsten Flipkins. Hey, everyone. We're here at the WTA Finals again with Coach Kirsten Flipkins. Kirsten, welcome to the show. Thank you. So how has uh, Cancun been for you uh, so far here coaching Demi and Des? Uh, it's been a, a pretty nice experience. I think the the place couldn't be any better uh, next to the beach and stuff. But I think, uh, yeah, court wise and everything, it was a um, tough preparation. I would say because the yeah. match court was only ready one day before the matches started, and we had to play already on day one immediately first match. So um, yeah, I mean, but yeah, circumstances have been the same for all of the players. So uh, we'll have to take it as it comes. Mm-hmm. How do you keep them ready during all this time off and all these schedule changes? Is there something you're thinking about um, trying to communicate to them or to keep like the focus high during these off days? It's uh, it's pretty tough, I have to say, because we were scheduled to play Sunday, Monday, first of all. Yeah. And then um, luckily we had um, an hour practice in on Monday before we got canceled um, at night. Um, but yeah, it's tough because... Every time you're practicing, you're thinking in function of the match tomorrow or later mm. today. Um, and then, yeah, you get rained out and you've been switching opponents from one day to the other because we were supposed to play Melichar Perez. And then mm-hmm. um, so they moved us now to Thursday and Friday, probably, which is not easy because then every day you have to adjust to the weather conditions to see how the players are feeling. And um, yeah, so to make the schedule for the practice is not always that easy, but you also have to go by the feeling of the players and make sure they're a hundred percent fit uh, physically and mentally to go mm-hmm. into the match. How's the, uh, the transition for you been from player to coach? Um, honestly, it hasn't been uh, hard at all because yeah. I made up my mind already. Um, 
last year, basically. Um, mm-hmm. Last year, Wimbledon, I stopped playing singles. This year, Wimbledon, I stopped playing doubles. So for, for me, the last year was just um, about, yeah, enjoying my time still on the tour and um, mm-hmm. playing the tournaments that I wanted to play. And uh, um, I had already in mind that I wanted to stay in tennis um, after my career, just not, yeah, not full-time, let's say, like not sure. traveling 35, 40 weeks anymore. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, I, I always enjoyed helping players. And um, it's also something I think that I had myself... Um, I had a good eye, I think, as a tennis player, tactically, um, mm-hmm. in singles as in doubles. And um, I think that's, yeah, that's something I want to give um, give my experience to to the other players. Yeah. Um, as a player, you were <clears throat> definitely one of the more um, crafty and I feel like smarter players on tour. Um, a lot of the listeners are, are club-level doubles players. What are some... Uh, some tips or some advice you can give to them in terms of double strategy and tactics uh, <laughs> that especially as it relates to to your own game yeah um well I think on club levels and stuff I think it's always um, first of all the net player has to be as pretty close to the net because I think some club level players uh, net players they're standing too far from the net okay. so you know if you want to be aggressive in a doubles play you always have to look for the ball and the closer you are to the net the easier volley you will you will get mm-hmm. um, of course you have to watch out for the lob um, but that's another thing I think it's a uh, it's just important you know like to to have a good strategy and to to go point by point and um, yeah Look also on the other side of the net, how the mm-hmm. other opponents are playing, if they have a weaker forehand or backhand, and mm-hmm. go from there. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking um, a little bit before we started recording about a, a player, and we won't name who it is, but, but we were talking about uh, how certain players have trouble with uh, slower pace balls. And I feel like at the club level, especially, a lot of players want to hit the ball really hard all the time mm-hmm. when that's not always uh, the best strategy. So that kind of, I guess, relates a little bit to what you're talking about, the other side of the net, how important that is. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're definitely one of the best uh, to do that on tour for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, what about some of the, it, you're really good at like the angles around the net and drop shots and things like that. Is that something uh, that you drilled and, and trained a lot or um, is it something that you just naturally always had and used in matches or maybe a combination of the two? Um, honestly, I think I was, since I was a kid, I always loved to play with the ball, you know, to hit drop shots or okay. to hit slices and stuff, um, as well in singles as in doubles. And I yeah. think um, that was one of my strengths that I I think from, from nature, I got a lot of talent, uh, meaning that I had good hands and um, I'm not that tall. So I had to use um, the creativity of trying to break the other opponent's um, strength. And um, as you said, I think also in the doubles, I think it's so important to try to break down your opponents mm-hmm. by using those those hands and by playing drop shots when they don't expect it, drop volleys and mm-hmm. um, or do a chip and charge stuff like that um chip lop and you know use use those tools and um to try to break down uh, the opponents is there a, a favorite doubles drill or um uh like feeding sequence or something like that that, that you have that that players might uh, be able to use to to improve some of those skills um actually one of one of my favorite drills is just to be two up two back Okay. Um, and first volley has to go deep, and then from there on you can use the whole court, which means that the two players in the back or in the back. So the, a good play to obviously play is a drop shot or a shorter ball mm-hmm. to make them come forward after that first volley. After yeah, that, yeah, exactly. So first volley behind the service line, and from that moment on you play the point. And that's yeah, that's that's one drill that I like to to try to use those angles and try to use those drop shots a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's one of one of my favorites. From a, a coaching perspective, now uh, I was talking with Demi a few minutes ago about um, how much information different players want. So um, I do a lot of analytics and think like mathematically very much and love to get like as much data as possible. Demi's not like that at all, right? She um, doesn't want as much information. How do you balance that as far as communicating uh, information to 
uh, the players? Um, that's a good question because I was always the kind of player that liked to go by my gut feeling. And okay. um, I think that's also something that the coach has to adapt to the player, uh, depending which player you're working with. Um, some players like to have more information about analytics and data which I'm myself, I'm also really interested in. I'm working, if I play, if I was working with a singles player, I always love to work, you know, mm -hmm. with analytics and data and to see um, service percentages, which side, where um, and stuff. And I think it's, uh, it also depends on the player you're working with. As you said, like now I'm working with Demi and uh, and Des, and I think those, those players are, or more going by their feeling, how they feel, and they just don't want to know too much about, you know, all those um, data and analytics. But I think it's a, it can be a good extra information for me to know, mm -hmm. like to maybe adjust something while the match is going on, mm -hmm. um, to maybe tell them, okay, do a little bit more of this of that. But um, I'm someone that has to, as a coach, you try to filter all the information that you have about the opponents, and if I mean doesn't really matter if that's a singles or doubles opponent right. but you always have to as a coach filter all the information you're giving to your player mm -hmm. who uh who's your i guess favorite or top three favorite doubles partners you played with my top three favorite doubles <laughs> partners or maybe you're your maybe a partner that that you felt like y'all um like just clicked really well or, or had the most success with Mm -hmm. um, well, I had a few doubles partners yeah. uh, throughout my career. Be beginning of the career, my career, I didn't play as much doubles because injuries were um, a big part of my career. Um, but I think my favorite doubles partner, I would have to say, probably Kim Kleisters, yeah. because um, yeah, we're we're really good friends and we always had a lot of fun on the court. Um, maybe result-wise, we were not the best team, but I think that was also because we just enjoyed ourselves on time uh, on on court. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, two other players that I had good success with and a lot of fun with on court is um, Sara Soribas Tormo, um, the last couple of years, and um, of course Johanna Larson. Uh, mm -hmm. Where I played semifinals with at the um, at the French Open. Yeah, how does uh, the strategy change for mixed doubles versus women's? Um, a lot, I have to say. I mean, I played mixed finals myself last year at the U.S. Open with Roger Vaselin, and I think um, the most important in the mixed doubles is just um, to focus on on the women's serve to make sure that you hold the women's serve. I mean, most of the men, they do keep their serves. Mm -hmm. It's not that often that, um, that the man gets broken in the, um, in the mix, but I think it's mm -hmm. the focus also has to be, for example, on, on the, the woman's uh, return. Can you thank me for inspiring you for the last Answer couple of <laughs> <the> show. <laughs> you, you, me or me, you, I mean, we both, you know, Come on. We inspire you want you make we make uh inspire each other, right? Thank you. Hans, do you have your doubles shirt here? Yeah. Uh I have it at home. At home? Okay. Actually Hans joined us yesterday for a ten minute hit in the doubles. So Oh nice. Yeah. yeah. She sleeps with the double shirt on. <laughs> You, me. Good. Next year, focus on doubles. I need, I need more tips. No more singles. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting on to my team next year. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> no, it was actually true. Uh, Ons was joining us for practice last uh, last day because yeah. there was problems with having the practice courts and stuff. So Ons had to bump us so off. And the court. So she okay. she jumped in for a for a few, few games, which was fun. Yeah, I can imagine if she played more doubles she would be really good at it <laughs> yeah definitely she's she's such a crafty player and you know she has such a such a good touch and uh, great hands great personality as well and um no she could be definitely a very good doubles player <laughs> yeah um so two more questions and then uh i want to let you go um to, so you we were talking about mixed and you said focusing on the girls serve is important how do you do that strategically does that mean um, the guy needs to be a little bit more aggressive at the net to help the serve out, or does the girl need to go for more on the serve, or what? What does that look like? 
Um, I think in the mix, it's important for the for the women to to have a high first percentage serve okay. first of all, because otherwise you get under pressure, especially against the guys. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, I think the the man at the net has to help you out trying to keep the serve. So he has to try to take maybe a little bit more risk to cover the middle a little bit more and to leave the line sometimes a little a few times open. And um, yeah, I mean, depends who you play with, but um, I think that's one of the most important things in in the mixed doubles to for the for the girl to keep the surf and uh, for the man to be a bit more active than he w- you would usually be in the men's doubles. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, last question for you: What? Uh, actually, two more. I'm sorry. All good. Uh, plans for 2024. Uh, f- no plans yet. Actually, I have to say, I mean, like. Um, I don't really have a have a plan for 2024 yet. Um, the only thing that's sure that I'm assistant coach for Billie Jean King Cup. Mm-hmm. So our captain is Wimphy Set. So um, that's something that is for sure. And the rest is open for now because, I mean, um, for now I'm helping uh, Demi and Des, but um, they also know that my goal is also still to to work with singles player. Maybe the combination, I don't know. So I'm I'm leaving everything open for 2024. And um, I just want to make a decision that I'm standing behind 100% with whoever or whatever it is. Sure. So this is the last question. Uh, how do we make doubles more popular? How do we make doubles more popular? I think it's most of the people, I think, that like tennis. They People who know tennis, they always enjoy watching doubles i think i mean mm-hmm. if you don't enjoy watching doubles i don't i don't get it because that's sometimes much more fun than than watching uh uh men's singles for example where the serve only is counting or whatever you know like sure. i think but to make it more popular i think there needs to be a good marketing strategy behind it as well and mm-hmm. and also you know like which is a little bit of shame i think this week here at the at the finals is that the the doubles matches are not on tv they are on WTA TV and and stuff, but for yeah, I think that that would make it also much more interesting for people to to keep watching um, mm-hmm. on TV and like this weekend, yeah, try to get more people um, watching doubles. Yeah, hopefully we can. Uh, it's going to take time, but hopefully we can make it happen. Exactly. Awesome. All right, Kirsten, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Doubles Only Podcast. If you're interested in diving deeper into any topics I discuss, I've created double strategy products that allow me to bring you more podcasts and other doubles content without relying on paid ads. I have ebooks and courses that help you make better strategic decisions during matches and become the smartest player on the court. Go to thetennistribe.com slash products to learn more. You can also join my free weekly double strategy newsletter that includes video lessons and more on our homepage. If you want to connect, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, or email me directly, will at thetennistribe.com.